I'm finding myself in a position now where we're making more money than we've ever made and we are literally the brokest we've ever been. Brokest we've ever brokest been. Brokest we've ever been. Brokest we've ever been. Realizing that I can't afford to live. Bro, what? I work full-time hours and I can't afford insurance because if I opted for insurance for me and my dependents, guess what? I would work full-time just to make sure I have insurance. I wouldn't even be getting paid. I would owe them money. My rent was $1,700 a month for a one bedroom. And then I got a notice that it was going up to 2,200. So I said, peace, see ya, I'm not doing this. Um, and then I get a call that's like, oh, was that price the problem? Like we can fix that. My rent just skyrocketed and I can't afford it. So I have less than 30 days to move and everybody else is asking for just two to three times rent, two to three times, I can't even speak. Who the fuck makes that? So I got a letter from my apartment complex to Miss Rachel Peterson Connolly. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but basically if Ty and I choose to renew our lease in August, it's gonna cost us $4,008 a month. We live in a two bed, two bath in South Denver. Just so you don't think I'm making it up, we would be paying almost as much as my parents do for a seven bedroom, 11 acre house. It's so high. Minimum wage workers have to clock over 100 hours. You know what was funny? Older people are gonna see that and still expect you to have your own house or apartment or family by like 25. Come here, that's impossible. It really is at this point. The homelessness crisis in America is getting worse. Lawmakers' attempts to fix it are not working, and we need to talk about why. And I say this as reportedly homelessness in the U.S. has reached now an all-time record high. That intro piece leads us directly into the topic of conversation for today, which is the fact that rent is way too high. Now, I don't necessarily know the answer to this issue, but it's still an issue. So in today's video, we're gonna look at some cases where people are struggling to pay rent. People are struggling to find places to rent. And before we do that, I just wanna kind of talk about my own personal situation for one second. I right now pay a rent which is around $500, which sounds like nothing. However, that's not the standard. That's just a rule of rental places that I'm renting because I know some people. And that's the only reason why that is $500. However, my wife is currently in school right now and we are splitting the cost of a $2,500 apartment. And so on top of that $500 that I talked about, I'm also so paying for a $2,500 apartment, which her parents also helped split that cost. So I'm paying around $800 on that. And so I'm paying around $1,300 a month in rent. I'm about to find out how much they're raising the rent on my New York City apartment. I have been dreading this because I love my apartment. Look at it. Um, it is a mess right now, but I would love to be able to finish decorating it. It is mostly done. I did everything in like three to four months and then I got tired, so I stopped. But I would love to finish, you know? I haven't been sure how much they're going to raise the rent by because it's been all over the place, not only in my building, but just in Manhattan in general. This is me realizing that they didn't actually list any of the numbers on the first page. I live in a studio on the Upper West Side, and I have an outdoor space, so I pay a pretty penny. I definitely pay more than I realistically should, but... I was still hoping they wouldn't raise it that much though, but they're raising it by 325, 375 if I sign after August 10th. And that's lower than what other people have gone through, I know, but still, I don't know. Things like this happen each and every year. You have a young lady whose rent is going up around 300 or so dollars right now. And so she signs early though, you can get that percent off. Go ahead and sign up so we can charge you month to month for your housing services. <laughs> It's crazy how high these prices are. I know inflation plays a role in this. And so if you look at inflation, I want to say it's like five to eight percent right now. But I think I read somewhere that housing has gone up more than the normal rate of inflation. So it makes sense. You see these prices going up each and every year. And I don't know where to end this. I just got denied for an apartment. Um, I have to move out of my beautiful big ass two bedroom apartment with a foyer and a separate kitchen and windows in every room we're not going to talk about it um just got denied for an apartment because with me and my friend who are going to be moving in together 
um, her credit score is not high enough for us to qualify together, but my income is not high enough for me to qualify on my own. Although I have a 740 credit score, I have savings, and I make 30 times the rent. But because I don't make 40 times the rent on my own, although we make more than 40 times the rent together, we don't qualify. We don't deserve to have a home according to New York City real estate. Um, and I'm just, I, I, I'm just like, I don't understand because it's like, so credit is powerful enough to make you a poor applicant when it's not good, but it's not powerful enough to make you a good applicant when it's good? I had some similar problem with my credit not too long ago. It probably was about three years ago. And so I had a great credit score. I was using credit cards in order to boost my credit score up. And I had like a 725, 730, and I was trying to get a car loan from a credit union that was downtown. And they told me that my credit history was not long enough. And so even though you have a great score, you cannot get this loan without a cosigner because we don't necessarily trust you because of your history is not long and all you have is student loans here and these credit cards it's just not enough even though it's your great score and i have been building my credit for around two years and in my mind i'm thinking damn i say all that to say this it seems like once you meet the requirements that you think you are supposed to fulfill there are even more requirements that you didn't even know existed. There is not a single state, city, or county where a worker can afford a two-bedroom rental at minimum wage. These are the updated stats for 2023, and even if we raise the wage to $15 an hour, you still wouldn't be able to afford a two-bedroom rental home. And I'm sick and tired of seeing comments saying that a minimum wage was never supposed to be a living wage. Like, you don't know what you're talking about, bro, because FDR literally created it for that very reason. And it's not just minimum wage workers. 60% of wage earners can't afford a two-bedroom rental. Does that sound like a sustainable system to y'all? For everyone that lives in a high cost of living area, how much has your rent gone up? Mine went from $2,100 to $3,000, and I was forced to move. And even then, I found a one bedroom for 2000. You see, I live in North Jersey, and unfortunately, North Jersey right now is literally the most competitive rental market in the US. So it just kind of feels like, regardless of how much money you make, you are going to overpay just to survive here. Somebody please let me know that I'm not alone here. This is getting absurd. Supply and demand is real. Everybody wants to stay in certain areas, and a lot of times, corporations and rental properties, they know this. And in my mind, I think a lot of times you are going to pay for not only that place, you're going to pay, of course, for location, which makes sense, right? You're going to pay for your safety. If you want to rent somewhere and you don't have the money, guess where you go? You go somewhere that is not as well upkept, which may be or may not be on the dangerous side of town, potentially, right? And so what does that do? It puts you in a place where you're not safe. You may or may not, you know, get robbed. You may or may not get stabbed, but you didn't have nowhere else to go because you only can afford a thousand dollars a month for rent as opposed to fifteen hundred or two thousand or even three. And you have people searching and searching for different places to stay with nowhere to go. Just like the lady in this video. You know, it was crazy to me. Um, I was just talking to my boss, right? She wanted me to get set up through their system to work from home. Because everybody at my job gets to work from home one day a week when you've been there for six months. While well, my time is coming up to work from home. She was like, hey, you need to do this and this and this and this. We'll get you set up to work from home. And I was like... Do we have to? You know, is it a requirement that we work from home one day a week? Because I don't have a home. I don't have a place to work from. I don't have that. I can work in the office. And that's it. And, I mean, how fucked up is it that that it is, that's what we all have to deal with right now? I've been working here for six months. Full-time, state job, with benefits, and I'm still homeless. 
I still have nothing. I don't even have a space to be able to work from home because I don't fucking have one. And I I don't think enough people realize the gravity of the situation. You know, I don't think people realize where we're at as a country. Um, because there's no reason that somebody who works full time for the fucking state can't afford to live in that state. Just my two cents, I guess. And it's actually sad that somebody who works in the state cannot afford to live in that state. And I, I don't know what her wage is. I don't know if she has any debt. I don't know all these factors, but there's a lot of different things that end up adding to the reason why somebody is in a particular situation. And most of the time you see whether it's not getting paid enough, whether rent in your area is just too high because certain states are just extremely, extremely too expensive to live in because you work a lot of hours, right? But it doesn't matter because your state is taking like half of your income. And it may not be exactly half, but a lot of states are taking a lot of your money out of your paycheck once you work and earn the income that you need to live yourself. And so there's a lot of different problems going on. Like I said earlier, I don't necessarily know the answers, but I'm here listening to the issues. I'm honestly so upset. Living in America is freaking ridiculous right now. There are people choosing whether they want to have Christmas gifts or pay their rent, and that might not be different from any other year. Two to three grand on average. You need to make two to three times that. 9000 a month. How many people with regular bachelor degrees are even making that? No one. Not a lot of people. No one wants to live with roommates. That's not the answer. Everybody deserves a safe and clean space. There's no reason why so many people should be roommating or you can't even buy yourself your own house. It's just, it's not, this is horrible. The rent is too damn high. The rent is too damn high. I represent the rent is too damn high party. It's because of inflation. Don't say inflation. It's not inflation. It's greedy landlords. Rent increases have outpaced inflation. Rents rose 14%, which is much higher than the overall inflation rate of 9.1% year over year calculated back in June. It is worse than that in some cities. Rent is too damn high. In some cities, it is much worse, up to 30%. Rent, it's too Damn high. The Fed raising interest rates doesn't help. That means it's going to be more expensive for people to take out mortgages with the higher interest rates, and that's going to drive would-be buyers into the rental market, further driving up rents. So how are home prices going up if people can't even buy them? Investors bought 24% of single-family homes nationwide last year, and this is up from 15 to 16% annually going back to 2012. So investors buying the homes increases the housing costs? Investors will buy six homes, four of them for for $200,000, but the last two for $400,000, effectively raising the estimated price of homes in the area. Then they'll sell the first four with a $200,000 gain, but this means they've now priced out all of the sellers, forcing them to become renters or leave the area. Okay, so what if you can't afford to rent, you can't afford a house, and you can't afford moving costs? Over the past few months, homeless shelters are reporting wait lists have doubled and tripled in size. So what do we do about the landlords? People have a lot of ideas about that, but the bottom line is we need a public option for housing. We need rent stabilization, we need to prevent the sale of any homes for people using it as a way to flip them and make money as an investment property to turn it into a rental. So if housing costs are so high, how are we on this like really nice porch in a suburban neighborhood? Neighborhood because this is a stock photo. Rent is too damn high, and there's mind. nothing else to talk about. Rent is too damn high. Rent is too high, and so you have a situation where not only is rent outpacing inflation, you have people who do not earn the wages in order to keep up. And these people are forced, like I said earlier, to either stay in bad situations or simply get roommates. And then you pile up roommates or either you have to stay with your parents who have worked and hopefully have a home that they can call their own. And maybe they're just paying some taxes on that house. But either way you look at it, it's a situation where it's getting harder and harder for people who are growing up in this day and age to establish their own wealth, which I will get into later on in this video, but let's listen to one more and then I'll talk about some aspirations that I have for myself and some other things that you can potentially take away from this video. Let me tell you why rent is so high. 
rent is high because these people who who are building these big complex these new complex they take out this massive mortgage they rent to the bank and take out this massive mortgage now they expect for the tenants the renters to pay this mortgage back which is unfair to those who are paying rent now the government in your state knows this know this is happening and they know this is one of the reason why they went up on rent but they still let them slide they let them slide because their city is profiting from their investment so we're looking at a situation where right now we have two problems that we know for sure one rent is too high as we have already stated and two a lot of people are simply not making enough money in order to cover the costs of these apartments not only that some people don't have the money in order to keep up with inflation so if you're working a job right now and your job does not give you like a raise every single year then you probably need to be relocating or going somewhere else or trying to find a different career path i don't know what your situation is like i know it's easier said than done but if you're able to you probably need to look at doing that and finding a career path and a job that gives you benefits like insurance you need all of that and on top of that you need a job that also gives you some type of pay increase every single year You guys, I pay $1,800 a month and I want to show you my beautiful backyard. Without warning, they redid the backyard. Can you see how beautiful this landscaping is? This lady was making a few hundred thousand dollars a year yeah. and her rent was capped at like $500 a month for a condo in Santa Monica. In terms of rent control, the one flaw is that it's not based on income. It really benefits the people who get in early and then don't move. So many tenants make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year who just happen to get in early, rent the same place from yep. 1995. Their rent is maybe a thousand dollars a month. They'll make 300 grand and they don't want to leave because it, why would I give this up? It's like a pension. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like I have one of the best apartment deals in Los Angeles. So here is what 1670. I watched this girl's video and was like, that's a good deal, but mine is even better. Literally anyone that comes to my place is like, you can never give up your location. You can never give up this apartment. Like you have to sit on this for forever. I live in West Hollywood. It's like a block off of Melrose. It's rent controlled and I pay like, $16.99. I signed the lease at $16.95, but there's like some taxes in there. And so it's like $16.99, so $1,700. But look at my apartment. When you walk in, it is completely open. There's so much natural lighting here, the front and the back. It's like 3.30 in the afternoon right now. Every room is ginormous. I mean, I have a full-on dining room. And then you go into the kitchen. I'm cooking some chicken, but completely new. I also don't have a dishwasher and I had to buy my fridge, but I got it for 200 bucks on Marketplace. Then you go down. The storage is insane. I have a living room closet there and a living room closet there that are both walk-ins. Then I have hallway storage here. And then this is my favorite part, my bathroom, which has a tub and also this gorgeous shower. It is pretty small, but it's amazing. Everything was renovated. So this, I am the first person to move into this. And then this is my bedroom, which is huge, right? I have a queen size bed, which I could definitely fit a king in here. And then I have a recliner and then the storage is insane. I have two closets with top storage, top storage and another closet. Like I literally love my place. Only thing is, is my unit doesn't have parking until someone moves out and a parking spot opens up. But literally this, I bury me here because I love it. Now that one video I put it in the beginning as a joke, even though that is semi-true. If you're paying $500 a month 
for some places you may have to go to sleep with a bulletproof vest on at night i'm just saying but as i stated previously in this video i don't have the answers guys but i just wanted to tell you guys sometimes you may have to do what you have to do until you find yourself in a better situation now i'm gonna tell you guys what i'm currently doing right now right now I'm making YouTube videos, I'm coding on the side, I'm doing different things just to make any type of side income that I can. This channel right here is not monetized, but I'm hoping that it will be at some point in time in the future. But I do have a YouTube channel that is monetized that probably makes, I don't know, no more than $100, $150 a month. But I'm taking a little bit of money that I can scrape up, I'm investing that, and I'm like trying to increase that money because it's not that much, all right? And so doing that, I have my 401k, I have all those other things for my long term saving, but in the short term, I'm saving up as much money as I can in the hopes of buying a house somewhere not where I stay is very rural. I don't care to stay in the city and I don't want to stay in the city. There's nothing that makes me more upset than staying. I, I don't like the city. That's, that's not for me. I want to stay away from the city. And it doesn't have to be far, but at least far enough away that it's not too loud at night. You know what I'm saying? I like quiet. I like my own land. So what I want to do is have my own land, my own backyard, a house. And where I stay, I think that's very possible. Buy some land. And I don't know about building a house or getting one of those. I don't know what they call it. It's like a pop-up house where they already had a blueprint and stuff. But and then I can fix the house like very, very fast for you. I don't know if I plan on doing that. I don't necessarily know that yet. But right now, I'm in the process of saving up as much money as I can. And I know that's hard for some people. It's hard because the money that you could be using to save, you had to use it on bills, rent, and groceries because everything is getting higher and higher. But you, it's, you're going to have to try to find ways that you can make money, but it's very easy and very efficient. YouTube is one way. YouTube is, I say easy, it's easy once you get, you know what I'm saying, monetized, you get a following, but it's hard to actually get started. But just different things, man. YouTube ways that you can make more money without actually having to put a whole bunch of time into it, which I know it would, every, everybody would be doing that if it was some like fast way that, you know what I'm saying, anybody and everybody could do. But you're going to have to try to build up a skill like I did. I learned how to code. That took six months to do. But right now, I can go on Upwork and make a couple hundred dollars or so. It took time to do these things, but it's a skill that I have that I can use to make cash on the side whenever I need it. And so that's just my piece of advice for anybody out there. I know some of y'all probably clicked away. Y'all like, man, what is this dude talking about? He ain't talking about nothing that I ain't already heard. But, you know, maybe if you hear it again, you'll, you know what I'm saying, take a little bit of action and do something because right now it's nothing that we really can do about it right now we just kind of have to find a way to navigate until you know a better situation pops up and so that's that's what i want i want to have my own land be my own house or if i do buy a house i want to buy a house basically like if i buy a house i want a good amount of land you know future kids can play on the grass and stuff like that and i want to be an owner of something i don't want to just rent something and be in a situation where that rent could potentially go up at any given time you'd be like the lady in that video i just showed not too long ago where you walk outside one day and it's just destroyed and stuff with no notice maybe the kids wanted to throw the ball that day and now i'm like well i guess we can go to the front yard but then you don't have a front yard because it, it's an apartment complex or something you know so then you gotta go to the park I, it's, it's it's crazy it's crazy but let me know what y'all think about this situation let me know your situation as well down below are you a homeowner are you a renter what is your current situation i would love to hear it a lot of people probably would love to hear some stories that you have in the comment section you may help somebody or you may give them some encouragement or you might you know help somebody realize maybe their situation isn't as bad or you can find somebody who is in a situation just like yours and you can read about it and know that you're not alone in this situation so i see you guys in the comment section y'all have an amazing rest of your day like comment and also subscribe